Hi, my name is Monica Grady. I'm Professor of Planetary and Space Sciences at the Open University. One of the really great things about space exploration is it's a cooperative venture. It is expensive and a single country usually can't do it by itself. That's why we have the European Space Agency, where all the main countries of Europe and Canada, actually, all pool their money so that they can work closely together. And because everything is cooperative and space doesn't belong to anybody, the spacefaring nations cooperate on something called a global exploration strategy. So that's all the nations of Europe and America and Japan, Australasia, China, all the different countries in Africa that have space agencies, and so many do. They've all worked together to design a framework in which travel and working and space exploration can take place. We also have the United Nations, something called the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, and that is looking at the legal aspects, who governs space, what happens if there's a, an accident or there are some pirates or things like that, or some, somebody tries to claim this particular asteroid or this particular planet. And so nations do cooperate very closely in space. They cooperate much more closely than actually governments on the Earth do. Space exploration is really, really expensive, and there are a lot of calls on the funding. It's like, right, okay, here's a pot of money. Should we use it to build a hospital? Should we use it to build some schools? Should we use it to, I don't know, improve motorways or whatever? You know, health and education are the two most important issues that any government has to face. And you think, well, space exploration must be really, really low down on the list of priorities. But when you think about what actually happens when we, when we approve uh, a space mission, we have some money and we take that money and we don't just throw it away. We use it to employ people to build equipment, to build rockets, and those people have houses and cars and go on holidays and buy food. And there's lots of money comes from the fact that these people have jobs and are doing this. So it's not throwing money away. It's not a waste of money. It's just using it in a different way. Now, you might still say, well, hang on a minute. You know, people in hospitals and schools do all that sort of thing. But actually, the amount of money that's spent on space exploration is very, very small compared to the amount in the UK, which is spent on the National Health Service, for instance, it's a, a tiny fraction. And when you think what you can use space exploration for in terms of inspiring young people to go into science, technology, engineering, mathematics, the STEM subjects, we need more science and engineering graduates. If everybody in, if every engineer that we were training in the UK went into engineering. We still haven't got enough engineers. It's the same throughout Europe. We don't have enough engineers. We are getting to be an increasingly digital technological society and we need those specialists. You can only persuade people to go and do these, this, this training, get these skills, if something has inspired them. So we use space exploration to inspire young people to go into those subjects and it also is inspiring because you know like they say because it's there we're natural humans are naturally curious people we're nosy we want to know about the stars we want to know planets we want to know is there any chance of life on mars we want to know what's on the other side of the moon you know these things and so so there's this urge in us to explore so there's all sorts of reasons why we should keep doing space exploration if the police suspect someone of having buried something or somebody somewhere, they would come to us. 